All right, gonna work on the, the water cool here again today. Not gonna do much. Uh, just cut some brackets for the side here, and maybe uh, a spark plug. Make a spark plug wire for it. I haven't had time to work on it because uh, I don't know if you notice the coop has pulled up a little further. I'm pretty jammed up here now, but uh, I had to stop and, and work on the old Craftsman here. That's my uh, lawn tractor for the last 32 years, and it uh, crapped out on me. It uh, needs a valve job, that's all, but uh, when, when I had to get to the valves and everything, uh, I had to take the head off, and I'm, I'm waiting for a head gasket. And uh, Also, I've also had trouble with the solenoid, so I'm going to replace the solenoid. So. Well, I'm waiting for parts on this. I can finally uh, do something with this back here. Got to get the lawn tractor going though, you know what I mean? Uh, grass grows fast. Alright, like I say, it's, I'm not going to do much. You know, except just maybe make a little bracket and uh, and a spark plug wire. So I'll throw you up on the tripod and, you know, maybe you guys just feel like hanging out. I wasn't going to film this, but, uh, you know, a lot of you guys like to see how I'm, I'm, all these little things are made and stuff. So, alright, let's get working. All right, first, I'm going to determine what size I need here, and uh, I'm going to be using this uh, piece of, uh, looks like three-quarter angle, three-quarter by uh, eighth, I guess, maybe, maybe three-sixteenths, but anyway, and uh, I'm going to determine, maybe right about here, because you're going to need room for the sprocket and stuff like that, and then you want to be able to adjust that, so. Right about where my thumb is, which is probably five inches. Now you got to wonder. Yeah. Wow. Rotating hit that dead nuts. Five inch, we're going to need to cut this uh, two five inch pieces. And then what we're going to do is uh, cut a little notch. Just cut a little little square out of this so when it goes in there it'll fit in there and uh, all this will be flush. Now let me cut these down to five inches. Alright, I'm going to cut this and I'm not going to use the power saw over there because I got to move a lot of stuff. It's all, it's all jammed up so I'm going to do this the old, old school way. We're going to cut it by hand. But I want to I get it pretty square and I know if I just put it in the vise like this and uh, and saw it like this, when I get to the side there, I know, I know I'm not going to get square, you know? So here's a little trick for you younger guys, when you got, if you got a vice. You take your line, I don't know if you can see it from back here, but I got a line here. And then you put it right at uh, where you want it, on the vice. Now it's not going to be square until you square it up like this. You know, you're pretty square right now. So then you tighten that bitch down. And then uh, you run your saw along the, the bottom of it. Let me get that out of the way there. And just from sitting on the vise level like that, your uh, your line's going to be pretty square on this. On this, I would have got away with it. Uh, you know, I, I probably would have got it pretty square. But when you get like a two or three inch piece of sheet metal or something, you know, quarter, uh, eighth inch or three sixteenths, and you want you want a, a flat cut, that's what I usually do. Put it in like that, and just let the the vise keep me going straight. And I finish cutting this, and then uh, my fact, I'm going to cut two of these. And then we'll notch them out. Alright. I'm going to lay my mark out here. Stick it up. Uh, actually, I'm going to go down here because I'm going to have to make a little notch in here to, to go around here. So, you still in frame? Okay. If I go, if I keep this flat, flush, flush up against this, I'm going to get a wrong reading. Because these, these pieces of angle actually have a radius in the, in the back here. So, what's going on here is if I if I just put a mark there, let me see if I can, uh, I don't have the light, I don't have the light to show you, sorry about that, but anyway, there'll be a gap, so I'm going to, I'm going 
going to leave this not flush, it's square, but it's not up against the thing here. And uh, you're not going to see this mark, but I will. And then if we notch that out, all we have to do is, uh, sorry about that, all we have to do is round the corner off where that radius is, and that'll give us a, a good fit. Actually, it doesn't really have to be that perfect because the weld is going to fill it, but, you know, it just gives you a place to start. All right, let's notch this out. All right, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but I have a little mark there. And instead of cutting it with a hacksaw, I'm going to cut it with this... Uh, this diamond uh, cutoff blade. You know I love these things. And uh, let me put my hair protection on. Yeah, I'll leave a description or I'll leave a, a link for you guys down there because a lot of you guys keep asking me about these. I love these things. Alright, we're all geared up. Now if I can only figure out how to use this. Alright, here we go. Just use the back as a guide and hope I don't cut my hose here. I can actually cut it like this. These are pain the balls, these safety locks. Alright, I'm gonna cut that down to where I want it. You guys don't have to see that. Alright, I round that down just to get that out of my way so now I can actually see where I want to make that. I want to I want to make that pretty flush with uh, just the end of that piece of uh, angle there and this time I'm actually going to use uh, my four and a half inch on the end of a grinder here it'll probably stay a little cooler and cut a little faster I don't know if I'll get in your way I'm gonna try to stay out of your way but some movement there so let me tighten my vise a little bit. I actually got it on the bottom of the vise which is a which is an awkward position. So let me see if that's a little better. Let me run that over to some water and cool it off. Alright, I gave it a dry fit and it's pretty much right where I want it, so. Just 
want to touch this. I'm going to use the grinder instead of the cutoff wheel. I just want to touch this up here a tad. Go, uh, let's go test fit it. Okay, we're happy with that. It's uh, it's going to be uh, flush. It's what we want. It's going to sit in there, and uh, it may not be perfect, but uh, the weld's going to fill that in. Now, up here, I'm going to want to make a little notch. Doesn't have to be very big, just uh, because this this part of the shroud sticks out a little bit, and then. Uh, this will be done. Alright, gonna make another one of these and then uh, we'll make a uh, spark plug wire. Alright, got both of these made now. Just had to put that little notch in there. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can back it up there. Yeah, that's just to uh, go around there. Alright, so these are done. I mean, we're gonna. We're going to drill holes in them and then uh, clean up the ends here around them, what do we have to do, but for the most part they're ready to have uh, one of the guys weld them on. Alright, let me clean this bench off here and then uh, we'll make a spark plug wire. Alright, that's some uh, spark plug wire here. I'm running out, but it looks like I, I should have enough to do this job. But anyway, we've got to go from here and we're going to go down behind the, the chain into the into the box and once we go in the box we're going to go all the way back to this this part only because our battery and uh, buzz coil are going to be back here because with the engine here way up forward like this this thing is pretty uh, I guess you call it top heavy but it's actually left heavy but uh, that's no problem so all we got to do is measure out what we need here and then uh, put a tip on it all right, let me cut that. All right, I thought I'd show you this. I got I got four different kinds of uh, connectors here, and I don't like any of them. These two here, I'm, I'm not I'm not even thinking about because we wanted this, but these these are too big and, and gawky looking anyway. Plus this is, and it's a push on here, and this is all I could find for a, you know a thumb screw type, and it, and it's, even that's too big. You know, I got one here on this uh, already already soldered on this wire. But uh, what I decide I'm going to do is here's the original coil, and I think I'll take this. This is even brass. Whoop! Let me fix that for you. I put that there so I know where the where the camera's at. Okay, so this one here is even brass, and I think it'll look a lot better. I hate to take it, you know, because it's original stuff like that, but. Uh, you can see it's you know it's like half the size. If anybody knows where I can get these smaller ones, let me know. Because I've looked, I can't, I can't find nothing but this this big <clears throat> big ugly thing here. Okay. All right. Plus this, you know, I could have used this uh, old-fashioned zebra wire here, but I uh, this is a bigger piece here, thicker. But I decided just to go with uh, with the regular black. You know, you start putting too many colors on it and uh, too many too many fancy things, and it just makes it look like something belongs in a circus. So I'm going to try and take this off and save it, repurpose it, and uh, clean it up and solder it onto the new wire. All right, I got that off the old wire. I was all ready to solder it up. I have my soldering gun here and solder, and even my little uh, soldering man here. These little guys. Uh, if you guys don't own one, you got to buy one of these. These things are incredible. And they only cost about three or four dollars. You know, they hold the wire for you while you solder and stuff like that. So I think they even call it an extra pair of hands or something like that. Anyway, uh, if you don't have one, you got to get one. I'll see if I can find your link. Put it in the description. But anyway, I took it apart. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's it was only crunched together, squeezed together. And the only th the only contact it had was them little uh, prongs sticking out there. So I figured if it was good enough, if it lasted, Christ, 70 years or so, like that, 
It's going to be good enough for me. I found something interesting on the top here. I'm going to see if I can close up on it for you there. I had some writing and I couldn't figure out what it said. I'm not sure if it says amp or, or what. But it was important enough for them to stamp that into that. Uh, there you go. It was important enough for them to stamp it into this little piece of uh, whatever you want to call it there. So if anybody knows what that is or means, you know, like I say, it looks like it might say amp, but I don't know. It might, might be something else. All right. Let me, uh, I'm just going to stick the wire in there and, and crunch it together. All right. I wasn't going to put it on this side, you know, going from the spark plug down here, but uh, you got all this in a way. You got the chain. You have a chain here and another chain going up to the, the fan. And then you're going to have the copper pipes, the plumbing coming down, plus the muffler. You know, see, you got a lot going on over here. So I uh, decided to come around this side, and there's really nothing on it over here. I got it uh, hooked up to the top here. Looks looks a lot better than that uh, big silver thing would have looked. And uh, just coming down here, and it's tucked in behind the, the gas tank and near the flywheel. But it's not close enough to the flywheel to bother or anything. So that's good. And then, then it comes out. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it comes out way over here, so there's, there's going to be enough uh, to hook it up to the buzz coil. All right. Well, if you guys hung in this long, I appreciate it. I mean, uh, I know a lot of you guys like uh, seeing how the little the little uh, bullshit is made and stuff like that. And uh, I appreciate you all hanging in there for the whole series. So, looks like once we uh, we weld this bracket up and stuff, all we have to do is uh, the plumbing. And then we're ready to put water in it and start it. So uh, we're not that far off. So hang in there. All right. Enough of this.